Hello, and welcome to our research pod. Thanks for listening. My name is Dr. Courtney Henry. I'm a researcher in the field of medical physics, and more specifically, nuclear medicine physics, which is a discipline that studies how small amounts of administered radioactivity can diagnose and treat disease. In my current work, I attempt to improve the diagnosis and treatment of cancer by advancing our understanding of nuclear medicine imaging and its role in absorbed radiation dose calculations, or radiation dosimetry. I was first introduced to nuclear medicine research in graduate school after I accepted a position as a research assistant in my professor's lab. After I graduated, I continued down this path, searching for PhD projects, and discovered Dr. Alistair Syme at Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. He was studying a novel radioactive particle used for the treatment of liver cancer. And after accepting this PhD project, I became more familiar with the concept of radioembolization and was introduced to ABK Biomedical, uh, and years later to their current CMO, Dr. Aravind Arapali, who's also joined us here today. Aravind, could you introduce yourself and provide us with some background as well? Hi, Courtney. Thanks, everyone. I'm Arvind Arapali. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for ABK Biomedical, which is developing a novel new Y90 microsphere technology that better leverages some of the imaging physics that Courtney has just recently mentioned, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. I joined ABK in the fall of 2022 after watching some of the clinical and technological advances they were making, specifically in the field of interventional oncology. My background, I'm an interventional radiologist with a focus and expertise in the treatment of liver cancers, in particular using Y90 radioembolization. You know, Courtney, this procedure has been around for about two decades, and there's always room for continuous improvements that have the potential to help patient outcomes. And one particular area that's really been challenging and is sort of an interest to me is there's really no currently standardized way to assess the tumors after treatment with Y90 and really see if we've adequately treated the tumor fully and with the proper dose. So our counterpart in radiation oncology or medical oncology, they have a pretty much standardized process for assessing before and after the methodology especially the radiation treatment planning and coverage of the tumor before and after. This is something that's lacking currently right now with the technology with Y90. I mean, we go through all this effort and the patient goes through a lot for the treatment. We should really be sure we've done the best we can and we've got the best shot at beating cancer right now, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And the only way we can validate the success of the treatment today is with post-procedure nuclear medicine imaging using positron emission tomography, known as PET, or single photon emission commuted tomography, known as SPECT. Post-procedure is simply referring to that after we've done the procedure, we're going to take some pictures, either using PET or SPECT or CT, to measure that absorbed dose. These are non-invasive imaging modalities that can measure the radioactivity distribution and the corresponding absorbed radiation dose. And this is an incredibly important measure because we need to know what radiation dose causes damage in healthy tissue, and what dose to deliver to observe a reduction or elimination of the tumor volume. And this is referred to as a dose-response relationship, which isn't as well understood in radioembolization as it is with external beam therapy, for example, where there's a much longer observational history. And I think our lack of understanding of this dose-response relationship in radioembolization can be partially attributed to that suboptimal post-procedure assessment you've mentioned, Arvind. Ultimately, the problem with current post-procedure dosimetry options, namely PET and SPECT imaging, is that they both suffer from relatively poor spatial resolution, meaning the images they produce have a blurry characteristic that's similar to images produced from an out-of-focus camera. You can imagine how this makes them challenging to use for accurate radiation dosimetry calculations. And it was actually back during my PhD at Dalhousie University that I attempted to address this problem. And that research was possible due to ABK's production of yttrium-90 or Y90 microspheres for radioembolization that are not just visible using PET and SPECT imaging, but also with CT imaging as well. These novel spheres are called I-90 microspheres. That's E-Y-E-90 as opposed to just the letter Y as in Y-90 microspheres. Arvind, from your side of things, what's your experience with post-procedure imaging and the clinical benefits of these novel Y90 microspheres? Well, in my time treating patients uh, with Y90 radioembolization, we currently use post-procedure SPECT at my institution, and that's used to assess really qualitatively tumor coverage. However, we really don't do an adequate job on the quantitative side. 
for most patients, this less than precise information that comes from these diagnostic makes really the time and resources spent questionable, like we've already talked about. And that's why I think I've been very interested in how I-90 works. So first of all, I think the multimodality imaging, in other words, we can see I-90 with PET, SPECT, as well as CT, it really has the opportunity to change how we measure the success of radio mobilization. One of the important ways it's different from conventional Y90 is that the microspheres have a calibrated radio opacity. So in other words, these microspheres are not only visible with a conventional CT scanner, it takes the concentration of microspheres, specifically in a target tissue, and it allows you to correlate that specific concentration and its radio opacity to actually a specific dose. We can use that to actually calculate the absorbed dose to the tumor, and we use that data and translate that data using some advanced physics and software to calculate how much dose actually goes into that target tissue. With the predictable and quantifiable imaging data this provides us, this really has the ability and gives the physicians more information regarding the biodistribution of the radiation and also to be allow us to quantify it and say what was the dose that was delivered specifically to that tumor. All of this is what you say is we can identify areas now where there may be misses or cold spots in the tumor, which would need follow-up or may need some kind of additional treatment in addition to Y90. So it's a big leap forward to have that kind of measurable, quantifiable, provable, actionable information Uh, I mean, just think of a patient getting to hear the doctors are even more confident that their tumors are highly likely to shrink and then not have to wait three months to see what is the response rate. We can assess immediately what the distribution looks like and what kind of dose was delivered to the tumor. And then therefore, we can tell immediately to the patient, I think I've got the target dose to the tumor. And we'll do the follow-up imaging, but I think we will be able to be fine. Or if you didn't get the dose into that tumor fully, you can immediately have an actionable situation where you said, look, I think we need to come back and retreat this, or we may need to do another option. So this really takes away that window of three months of unknown what's happening and waiting to see the results of the therapy to now shortening that process where you have a more immediate feedback to the physician and to the patients. And I feel like that will really help the whole process and also help to also figure out what is the dose we need to give to the tumor and be able to advance that process overall. I agree, Arvind. With these I-90 microspheres, we no longer have to rely on just pet or spec imaging alone for post-procedure dosimetry. The composition of I-90 is such that it highly attenuates the incident x-rays in CT imaging and shows up pretty clearly on the reconstructed images. And since CT has excellent spatial resolution relative to PET and SPECT, this provides us with the potential for very accurate dosimetry. And this was the basis of my thesis, is that uh, CT imaging of these novel Y90 microspheres could potentially improve dose estimates following radioembolization. And over the course of my PhD, I published my research findings that described how to perform CT-based dosimetry with these microspheres. In my most recent paper on the topic, published in EJN MMI Physics and linked in the description of this episode, that's the European Journal of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging. We compared PET and CT-based dosimetry following the administration of I-90 to a rabbit model. And we showed that CT-based dosimetry is superior and that it provides more accurate dose estimates, which are more important for understanding this dose-response relationship and ultimately improving patient outcomes. This work was recently awarded the best paper of the year in the journal, uh, which is a huge honor and I think speaks to the value of this research for clinicians and patients undergoing the treatment. We were pretty excited and surprised, uh, I'll say, to to hear back from them. It's a pretty big deal in the the research world to get best paper of the year. So we were very, very excited to see that. And the success motivated a collaboration between myself, ABK Biomedical, and MIMS Software to develop a clinical solution to implement this new CT-based dosimetry framework. We spent some time optimizing the workflow, utilizing patient data and images from a phase one first in human I-90 microsphere study that was recently conducted in New Zealand. 
Uh, and this set the stage for the next human study with this advanced technology. And we look forward to implementing CT-based dosimetry in this pivotal study. Arvind, could you go into some of the specifics for this clinical trial? Sure, Courtney. So the outcomes really are coming from the research of you and Alistair's on uh, CT dosimetry. So we're excited to study the I-90 microspheres as an exploratory endpoint in our new Route 90 FDA pivotal study. It'll really be the first time we can prospectively evaluate this technology in humans in a control setting with the appropriate use of CT scanners, specifically addressing CT dosimetry. So we'll also be performing the standard of care in addition of using post-procedure spec CT dosimetry for each of these patients. So now we can actually measure and compare the two models of post-procedure dosimetry, CT-based dosimetry and spec CT. There's huge clinical value and health benefits utilizing the CT-based technology. So overall, it's a very exciting time being able to really translate some of the work you've done in the past and now implementing this into a FDA pivotal trial called Route 90. Absolutely, Arvind. I'm excited to see this work getting the attention it deserves, and we'll certainly follow this clinical trial closely. For now, though, that's all we have time for. If you'd like to know more about ABK Biomedical and all the research underway there, you can just head to abkbiomedical.com. That's the letters A, B, and K. There, they will have the links to the papers we've discussed, including the EJN MMI paper and the show notes for this episode, as well as links to the Route 90 trial info. Thanks for listening, and that's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.